welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I am your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, here at Deep Adventure Ministries, we believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And we always tend to have some some kind of wild guests on our show just to prove it, who have kind of lived a little bit on the edge and uh, really experienced uh, God's working in their lives. You know, the Lord has called us to be witnesses you don't have to be a theologian or you don't have to be an expert like on Catholic, Catholic answers. You need to be a witness. I remember when we, my, my family had just gone through a deep conversion experience when I was in college. All of us within a six-week period, six members of our family had experienced a personal encounter with Christ through the Catholic charismatic renewal. And people told my dad, you know, he was highly educated, he had a master's degree, but he was no theologian. And they said, well, you need to be a witness. And he goes, what, I'm going to see a car accident or what? What's going to happen? You know, no, you need to be a witness uh, to the Lord. You don't have to be ready with every kind of theological answer. You don't have to be a Catholic answers expert. What you want to be is a witness. And this is what a witness says. I have good news for you. I, I have experienced a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, and you can too. God loves you. He loves you right where you are. But he loves you too much to leave you in that, in that condition, to leave you in that place. God has a great adventure in store for you. He has a plan for your life that's going to be full of meaning, full of adventure, and, in, and, and he wants a personal relationship with you. And then, you know, it's really okay when they say, really, how can I do that? To pray with them. I just call it the St. Augustine Prayer, where you just say, Lord, I just surrender all that I am to you. Uh, come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. And it's a really good idea then to help them from there to disciple them, maybe uh, bring them to a Catholic priest. Maybe they have, maybe they've never been to a church before. Uh, I love those kind of conversion stories where people have never even been in a church. But get them in, get them, get them in touch with your pastor so that they can be go through the the right uh, things to be baptized and to become a full member of the church. Uh, bring them to your men's group. But uh, once you lead someone uh, in that initial prayer. We as Catholic don't, Catholics don't believe that once saved, always saved. You hear that a lot in the Protestant uh, since uh, about 500 years ago. We started to hear that. It had never been, but never been spoken before, that t- sort of theology, uh, for the first 1,500 years of the church. But what we do is we believe in an initial conversion and then ongoing deeper and deeper conversion uh, while we work out our salvation in fear and trembling and humility uh, and in love with our Father. So um, be a witness. Just say, I got to tell you what Jesus did for me. It could be just the simplest thing, or it can be just the biggest thing, or it could be just, I experience him. When I wake up in the morning, I experience him. When I'm walking through my day, I experience him, and you can too. So uh, you can. all you have to do is say, I've got good news for you. God loves you. He has a personal plan for your life, and I can lead you into a personal encounter with him. Okay? And just try it. Just try it. See what the Lord will... It says the Holy Spirit will confirm his word. God will speak through you. There's nothing more exciting than leading someone to an initial conversion in Christ. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You've got to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We have so many great things for you there. We have our web store, my books, my Bear's Man Cave, Seven Virtue Cigar Samplers, our Warrior Rosaries, our Long Ride Home cast member TV, you know, TV show cast member T-shirts you can get there. So much great stuff. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, and click on the web store. Okay. Now I get to introduce my uh, uh, co-adventure guy today. His name is Rick Richard Lentz. Uh, can I call you Rick or do you go by Richard? I go by Rick. That's what I thought, but the formal thing I got from you on your bio, bio says Richard. So Rick, you're the co-founder and director of Brother to Brother Ministries. I already love that. Can you, uh, before we get rolling, just give us what that concept is? The idea behind it is to do one-on-one discipleship with uh, Christian brothers or non-Christians who are searching uh, for Christ and walk with them on their faith journeys. In fact, uh, on the shirt that I'm wearing, 
uh, underneath brother to brother, it says building friendships without measure. And that's what we try to do with men. And we've been doing that now for 15 years. Well, we're going to, I want to dig back into that more, but first let's backtrack a little bit. Sure. So um, we're talking about opening this, this door to, uh, to heaven, you know, that, that Jesus standing on the, at the door and knocking. If anyone lets, opens the door and lets me and I'll come into him and sup with him. So I understand you're pretty good at opening doors. <laughs> well, now there was one time in uh, Taiwan, a major and I were coming back from a party late at night, early in the morning. And I get out of the car and walk up to my Quonset hut, say, turn, say goodnight to him as I'm opening the screen door and walk right into the side of the Quonset hut and not through the door. So that's a really, that's, there's a real spiritual application. To, well, first of all, there's a real good application. You know, watch where you're going. When you're with a, 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 an officer that outranks you, stop and salute him first. <laughs> Let him keep walking before you open the door. But, but there is that, that certain something today, I think, where people are trying to walk in to, to, uh, walk in to, to heaven, and, they're, and, they're, not, and they're, there's no, they're not opening the right door. There's only, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but my me, and they open up a door, and they, they walk right into the wall. They miss the door. What, 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 what do you think about the, the situation today? What, what, what can we say to especially men about their choosing, oh, properly opening a door and how to get through? <laughs> well, you know, the, the first thing is, is to um, look for God and find somebody to walk on that faith journey with you to help you find that right door so that you can open it and walk through. Yeah. You know, because so much of the world today, they go, well, um, you know, I really, I really love this person. What isn't God for love? Why can't I live with them? That's well, not, that's, that's, that's not opening the door. That's basically, you know, keeping it shut. Right. I've been there, done that. Um, and that whole idea that God loves me, God loves us requires something from us and that's obedience to obey his commandments um to do the works that he created us to do mm. as we read in ephesians two ten, 10 um, and that's how we get through that door and walk toward god and draw closer to him yeah the scripture yeah. says if you love me you do what i command you uh, uh, but so many people are trying to do things on their terms and uh, you know, they they think they think they know better than God, and yet God made them, made them with a purpose, and and and, and uh, made them to have a rich, full meaning in their lives, and to have personal relationship with Him, and opening that door and walking into a wall, and they and then they'll ask me, what should I do about this? My, my, you know, I'm living with my boyfriend, and I, we're having these issues, and I'm like, you're not, you, you, I can't even answer that question because the very foundation of the way you're approaching it is wrong. That's correct. That is very true. Well, let, and, let's, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Rick. And, you know, when the guys I mentor, uh, married, single, and we talk about those issues, you know, and I try to discuss with them what I did wrong in my life and how not to do it uh, till Christ brought me back to him uh, through several steps. And um, that we're just called to live the life he calls us to be a chaste as a single person, uh, chaste in our marriage, being true to our spouse, um, and living out those kind of ideals that God's called us to do. The people, people wonder why isn't this working? It's because you're, you're, you know, it's like you're trying to use, like we, we were getting ready for our hur hurricane on long ride home. Speaking of doors again, and we're trying to seal the doors and the windows because there's a hurricane coming and we're about to leave town. In fact, our first, the first moment of our first episode, you see us riding in a hurricane on our motorcycles, but we're trying to button up the, the, the studios and you see uh, Tony Orban with the battery pack for the, the screwdriver using it as a hammer to try to, to, try to hammer <laughs> something close. And that's basically what we're doing. We're not, when, we're not, when we think we know better than God, and we try to do it our way. It's like using the, the right tool for the wrong thing. And by the way, um, living with someone outside of marriage or having sex before marriage, sex is, about the, is, is probably the most powerful thing there is in, in humanity. And to take that lightly, to say something to a young person and say, you know, um, 
make sure that you really you feel really ready and you really care about this person before you make love to them. But it but you're, they're telling kids to make love. You know, it's okay to make love when you're to have sex when you're in high school or even in college. Sex has this incredible uh, purpose for it to really bring union between people. And when you start having sex outside of marriage, it's like walking into that wall again, opening the door and walking into a wall, and then you wonder why you get hurt. Um, Rick, we're going to take a break, and then I'm going to get more back, get back into your backstory. But where, where can they find your ministry on the, on the website? www.brothertobrotherministries.com brother to brother ministries to, uh, dot com, just the way you would think it was spelled out and uh and what what the unique ministry is is uh reaching out uh, mentoring one on one sometimes and, and teaching gifts too so we'll be back with our guest uh Rick Lentz as my co adventure guide this is the bear Wozniak adventure go to youtube and scri- describe uh subscribe to youtube uh the bear Wozniak channel there and you can you can watch uh the uh the the vid- the radio show instead of just listening to it on a podcast or on the EW10 network. You can actually go to our YouTube Bear Wozniak channel and subscribe. So please do that. It's a lot more fun to watch it sometimes than to listen to it. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to thank our wonderful sponsors, Solidarity HealthShare and Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, uh, without them, uh, it would be difficult for us to do, that, to do this radio show. And we also want to thank our listeners who have gone to our website, deepadventure.com, and have become a monthly uh, donor for the ministry because we really need that knowing that monthly residuals there. It really helps us make our plans. Our, our ministry is not funded by EWTN, our radio show. We receive no funding from them. And our TV show, the motorcycle-based reality show, Long Ride Home, we reserve, receive about one-third of our funding. So it's all miracle money that helps us do the rest of what we do. So we appreciate your support. Our co-adventure guy today is Rick Lentz. He is the founder and president of Brother to Brother Ministries. Uh, Rick, can you tell us, uh, go back now and talk to us about uh, your personal journey uh, that brought you into uh, the place you are today with the Lord, starting as far back as you want to go as a youth or or, or whatever. We know you're a decorated Vietnam veteran. So please uh, let Give us the street cred here. <laughs> Why would it, the guy in the black pickup truck want to listen to this? Give us your street cred. Well, going back as young as I can remember, um, my mother was always reading to me from children's Bible studies, uh, bi- you know, Bibles. And so I grew up with a deep faith in Christ. My actual first encounter was I was about nine years old, and I was watching the movie uh, The Robe. And um, at the into the crucifixion scenes, I asked God why such a wonderful, kind, compassionate man as Jesus could die on a cross. And he said, in order for me to be reconciled with all of hum- humankind, and I was only nine years old. In other words, you sense And that this, stuck with me. You, you, this is the sense that you had. You had a sense of what the Lord was saying to you about Jesus' work on the cross. Got it. Okay. That's correct. So five years later, uh, my father tells my mother he wants a divorce, and Mm. the whole world goes topsy-turvy, and my mother attempted suicide and failed. And a couple days later after that, I'm just sitting on my bed looking out the windows and uh, just crying and asking the Lord all those why me questions. You know, why don't you love me, God? You know, where are you in all this? I thought you loved me. Don't let my parents divorce. 
And again, God gave me this sense of people are going to do things that hurt you, and you're going to do things that will hurt other people intentionally or unintentionally. And But I promise to be with you through this time of trial and suffering. 20 years later, I learned that was 1 Corinthians 10, 13, where God promises that no matter what happens, he will be there to give us the strength so, to endure it, not so take you it had away. So you had that sense in your heart. It wasn't like you had read a scripture, but you just had that sense in right. your heart. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's true. And then starting when I was about 15 or 16, I started drifting away from God, even though I knew how much he loved me. Um, in college, I looked for, um, and in the Air Force, my first years in the Air Force, I looked for uh, adventure and happiness through sexual misbehavior. Uh, in fact, uh, my girlfriend in college, we became pregnant, and a decision was made uh, that she would have an abortion, and so we flew to New York for that. Uh, it was very traumatic as I look back on it, um, and I just didn't have the moral courage to, you know, to do something otherwise. You know, I think most abortions, and, uh, wouldn't ha you know, Rick, I think most abortions wouldn't happen if there was a strong man in that woman's life, either a father or an uncle or the, or the person who, who, um, um, had sex with her. Um, I think most women would prefer to keep the baby and perhaps give the baby up for adoption. Yeah. If there's a strong man in their life, as you said, what was the word you said? Uh, you weren't strong. You didn't have enough strong moral code at that moment or, but if you'd had that, that person would be alive today. That must have been very hard for you. That, that's exactly right. right. So we need our it, men to step it up. It was over time. Mm. Um, oh, gee, where was I going? Um, well, later was, on, when I came into the church, well, wait, wait, let, let's, uh, let's, and I let's went wait. to my first... Wait, uh, let, let, let's wait a little bit. I want to hear about this. So you had this experience with the abortion, and there were really three victims, the baby, uh -huh. you, and the woman. And then what happened? I want to hear. I don't want to just skip ahead. We really want to hear your your story. That's pretty gut wrenching. And then tell us about what happened. Okay. In your life. Well, at, you know, after that decision was made, and we go to New York, she has the abortion. We come back. We did share some t tears about that, and we actually our relationship stayed together off and on for seven more years. Um, but. It was just something that we never talked about again, you know, about that. We just kind of let it go. Um, for me, when I came into the church and went to my first reconciliation and confessed that sin, and it was just a whole weight of the whole world was lifted from me uh, by being able to do that. Because, you know, I grew up not in the, not Catholic. I grew up in the Protestant world. And so there was no what would should we call it uh no avenue to go and receive an absolution like that it's like going to a counselor you, so, uh, you graduated you confess your sins but you don't receive absolution you know to receive that right that you can do so, okay so then go on with your story uh so i went into the air force uh after graduating from college in 1969 and uh, went to pilot training and washed out, went to navigator school and received an assignment to be a navigator on C-130 turboprop aircraft in, in Taiwan, which meant I spent most of my time in Southeast Asia, in Vietnam. And uh, there were, you know, fun times, partying and, and so forth. Uh, but there were also some um, sad times. Um, on April 15th of 1972, on a low-level airdrop mission, uh, our aircraft was hit by 87 rounds of 51 caliber machine gun fire, which killed the engineer. He took a bullet through the head. I was standing next to him, and the bullet passed by me. Um, and all this happened right as we were dropped, doing the airdrop at, from 600 feet, and I I, 600, I, my job was to say you're green 600, light. You're 600 feet over the ground. And is it daytime or nighttime? Off the ground. Is it day, daytime? It's daytime. Night? And, and you're, yes. are, are, you going into and a, are you going into a hot zone? You know you're going into a hot zone at that time? 
yes, we were going into a hot zone. We knew it was a hot zone. We were going to drop 12 pallets of 105 rounds on a soccer field. <laughs> did, were, did you have any sort of to do? Yeah. Did you have any support with you uh, to uh, protect your, your, your plane or just flying in, coming in low? We were flying in basically alone. There, there were some A-37s hovering around there, uh, firing rockets and so forth uh, at the um, North Vietnamese and Viet Cong armies on the ground. Um, and so just as I said, green light, I get knocked to the cockpit floor and look up and see, you know, the engineer's part of his head's missing. And I hear the load rumble out. And we start climbing out from the drop zone. And then uh, the load master says, two of our pallets blew up on the way to the ground. The other 10 actually made it on the drop zone. So they had been, they were, they were shot. They, the, yeah. The, the, um, the last two pallets, one of the, one of the bullets had caused a fire in the mm. cargo compartment. And the last two pallets were on fire. Oh man. And so our load master and a Vietnamese load master pushed them off because they had wedged together. They were a cardboard. And if he pallets. had done that, your whole plane would have gone down. Yes. The whole plane would have gone down. And that load master received the air force cross for his efforts. Um, and that was confirmed by an army major who ended up in the same ward that I did at the, in the hospital in Vietnam because I got wounded in the shoulder. With that, shrapnel. Uh, so you, you so, were hit, you were hit, hit by, uh, there with shrapnel in the plane or was that a different incident? Yeah, it was a piece of the aircraft. One so the, from the, a control panel so or the, something, a piece of metal. The army sergeant on the ground was wounded and he saw you he saw the explosion from the ground too we're talking with rick rick lentz he has yeah, a, we're talking with rick lentz he has a ministry to men called brother to brother ministries uh and we encourage you to go to his website and check that out because there's something you can get involved in the in, in the one-on-one -on -one type ministry with them and you can also become a leader and help bring that to other people we're going to talk more about with rick about his conversion experience now listen to what i'm saying what Rick is saying to us right now rivets our attention much more than to say, let me explain the Holy Trinity to you. Or let me explain, if you're talking to someone who doesn't know the Lord, let me explain uh, Jesus Christ present in the Eucharist. What he's sharing with us is a gut level witnessing, a witness of his experience of his walk with the Lord and how the Lord brought him uh, into a personal encounter with him. Uh, we want we need to learn to speak as witnesses. We don't need to be theologians to say, I encountered the, the God of the universe, the God who created me, and I know he loves me. I feel his love. I know he loves me. And um, I know that he has a great plan, for, a really wonderful plan for my life and for yours. Would you like to get to know him? Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses. He didn't say you will be my theologians. You know, it says that Jesus uh, appeared to a bunch of theologians one time, and he said, he asked him the question, he asked Peter, who do you say that I am? And one of them said, you are the charismatic ground of our being. And then he said, he, he looked at him and, and the other, the other, um, the other pre professor looked at him and said, you're the eschatological manifestation of the, of the coming of God. And Jesus looked at him and said, what? <laughs> you know, like, you don't have to know all those fancy words to be able to lead someone to Christ, what we're saying. Be a witness. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the real world, where we talk with real people about real life situations. You know, the real world is tough. If you're going to live in this wor real world, you better get ready to man up. It's tough. And I got to tell you, you know, my wife loves to wa watch the Hallmark Channel, and so I do. I'm not going to say I don't get caught up in it sometimes, but I never have te teared up during a Hallmark Channel a TV show. But I, you know what makes me get choked up? I'm not going to admit to any tears 
But you know what gets me choked up? I mean, really gets a lump in my throat. Like I'm embarrassed, like maybe there's going to be a tear trickle down. What really puts a lump in my throat, gets me kind of choked up, is Rocky Balboa, you know, coming back and winning in the fight, you know, in, in, uh, beating Apollo Creed. That's what gets me choked up. And, and that's what the nature of a man is. The nature of a man is to be a hero, to, 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 to want to, to, to make a comeback. We live in a world of adversity. Every one of us, men and women, are, are meant to be Rocky Balboa, to toughen up, to be able to take life's hits and say, it, it, you know, and, and to be able to say, it, it is God's strength, it is God's love that strengthens me. To be able to say, not my will, but your will be done. That, that, that relies on Jesus. When, we, when, we, when we're faced up against uh, adversity that we can't overcome, that causes us, a, causes us to have one recourse, and that is to say, God, help me, help me, save me. And then we get to see God move. So life is full of adversity, and it's, it's the stripping away of the dross. It's the stripping away of our selfish agendas. We get to the, final, we get to the point where all we want to do is cling to God. You know, on a, on a boat, when I used to sail my boat, um, uh, my my sloop, you know, my only a 27 foot, you know, little sailboat, but I always would sail it by myself. So I always had a rope trailing out the end with several knots about every 10 feet, and it would trail out there about 100 feet behind me. Um, in case I fell in, I could grab that rope. And the very last knot on that rope, uh, sailors have called the bitter end. And so you hear about the bitter end, but that's that's where it got its name. The bitter end is that is that last dangling rope. Well, that's what we're offering to you today. Uh, as we're sailing by, we're throwing out a rope to you. And we're saying, grab onto that rope. If you've reached the bitter end, that's a great place to start from. As you know, that uh, it's not going to get any worse, and you can give your life to the Lord. It will bring you into the bark of Peter, to the boat of Peter, and bring you, uh, help you find your direction in life. We're talking with Rick, Rick Lentz. Could you continue to tell us? He's, he's the founder and, uh, of Brother to Brother Ministries.com. And can you tell us in what happened? You 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 were you were in a in a hot zone. Your your plane had been hit. You were hit in the shoulder uh, in Vietnam. You were dropping supplies out of a C-130 at 800 feet. You were treetop flying. Okay, so at, at that point in time, I'm not walking with Christ. So I get through the hospital thing. I come back to the states. During that time period, we lost. Uh, five air crews, five airplanes, and three air crews. They didn't make it back. Uh, I was came back to the states, um, and I couldn't go to any memorial services because I thought if I walked into a chapel, God would strike me dead. And because that was of the way, a, that because was of the way you had Satan been living. put fear me. Because of the way you had been living. Because of the way I was living. Yep, and I didn't change much for a couple more years. Uh, so I fast forward. Um, to 1974, I'm coming back from dinner with a young Christian woman. We're sitting at my kitchen table talking, and I'm talking about all these books by Carl Sagan and all these different people and about aliens and about Jesus. Mm -hmm. The story of Jesus' resurrection is him being lifted up to the mothership. So right. when, I, when I give a talk, I like to say I can see it, see it all now. Jesus the Scotty, beam me up. And... Um, she starts crying and I ask her what was wrong. And she said, you're making me doubt my relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm, and I was, you know, really taken aback by that. And I said, no, I believe in God and I believe in Jesus and I would never do anything uh, to pull somebody away from Jesus. Somehow Luke 17, two came into my mind that if you do anything to leave one of these astray children astray, It'd be better if you tied a millstone around your neck and went into the sea. Wow. And I said, I'm just playing the devil's advocate. And the Holy Spirit hit me with a two by four and a ton of bricks. And I realized I was being the devil's advocate. And I apologized to her. And that started me on my road back to the church. In 1975, uh, I met my wife, Karen. Or in 74, I actually met her. Uh, and uh, we were married in May of 75 in the Catholic Church, and I started telling everybody I was Catholic. Had you been Two to confession? Did you, go to conf that, did you go to confession before you got married? No. <laughs> and Two priests actually told me that I could receive communion 
so I didn't look like the odd man out if I believed that, you know, this really was the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And they told me to go read John chapter six and, um, and revelation or not revelation, first Corinthians 10, 16. And I did, I came back and told both of them, I believe this is really true. I've never seen this before. So they said, you can receive communion. Well, they meant only for my wedding. And I didn't take it that way. So I said, now I'm in the church, and I believe this. And I went to communion for six years before well, I realized let, well, let's make it clear. that I was in error. Let, well, let's make it clear. They were in error, too, and in, uh, in going against church, uh, church protocol to allow you to do that without having been in full fellowship with the church. That was right around the time of Vatican II, and people were kind of misconstruing it. So I just want to make that clear to our listeners. Because if you're not a Catholic, uh, you cannot receive the Eucharist. And, and if you're a Catholic, that's in mortal sin. You should not receive the Eucharist. Um, in fact, the word mass comes from the word exit, which means, um, you know, you can stay for the liturgy of the hour. You can stay for the liturgy of the word, which is very consistent with Scripture. First was the reading of the word and then the breaking of the bread. But you had to leave after the reading of the word to get further instruction until you were later baptized and brought fully into communion with the church. You weren't allowed to receive the Eucharist, even in the year 50 A.D. But these priests thought they knew better. Uh, but anyway, you received the Eucharist because they told you to, and then what happened? That you, because you believed it was, even though you so, weren't in full fellowship. Yeah. Yes. And, but by 1981, I'm actually teaching a Catholic Bible study for couples, and I show up at RCIA. Because I realized what I was doing wasn't, I wasn't in full communion with the church. Mm. And um, the priest there says, Rick, it's good to see you. I didn't see you on my list, but I could really use you as, a, you know, a, a, to help me with teaching classes. I said, Father, I'm not here for that. I'm here to come in com to, as a uh, candidate to come into full communion with the church. And his eyes got really big and his jaw dropped. And then he explained, used me to explain to the whole group. There was like 60 something people there to come into. Well, praise were God for that. Wow. And half of them came into the church. But, but he used you as an example. <laughs> they were, they, uh, what did he say? He, he used me as an example of what not to do until <laughs> you were fully into the church. And so I had to fast. And spiritually, it was the eight months, longest months of my life till the Easter Vigil, April 10th in 1982. In other words, you didn't receive communion. And That's there were why, days. Was that why it was the long? You said it was a long time. I didn't. You didn't receive communion. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and so, you know, I went through the program and went through my first reconciliation, as I mentioned earlier. And it was a joyous day uh, uh, when I was confirmed in and receive my first real Eucharist, <laughs> especially after that fast. Um, so it was, it was a, just a very well, what blessed about, day what to about your the church. What about your confession leading up to that? My, you know, my wife was a Catholic, and, but she was not well taught you right. know, in her, her faith, but mm -hmm. she was there walking with me. Yeah. But tell me about uh, leading up to entering full communion with the church, you got to go to confession too. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't the, quite the catch that. The sacrament of reconciliation. Well, let, let, let's take a little break and we'll come back and we'll talk more about that. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Rick Lentz. He's the founder of Brother to Brother Ministries. You can go to brother, to brother ministries com to find out more about his ministry. We're talking about his uh, his. Uh, God kind of just pulling him into, into his love and into the church. Uh, we want to invite you to go to our um, website and become a member of Bear's Man Cave. Uh, Bear's Man Cave is an opportunity for you to go to our secret Facebook group. You can't join by going to Facebook. You have to go to deepadventure.com to join. But if you do join, you're invited to be part of a secret Facebook group. And in that secret, fa in that secret Facebook group, we, we share we, the men there challenge each other with posts. They may share personal things, uh, prayers, questions, needs of encouragement. And then about every two or three weeks, we have a Zoom video chat where the men kind of join up uh, and we're able to see each other and we talk story. We, we have a, basically like, like a small men's group. And we, you know, 
some of the men may be having a cigar, a shot of whiskey from wherever they are in the world. And uh, we, uh, we go through my, one of my books. The one we're going through right now is Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. But really, it's just a, it's just a means towards building fellowship. And out of that Bears Man Cave, a lot of ministry has happened. Uh, new man caves have been started. Uh, some members have gotten into teaching RCIA. Another new member has become a member of the church council. It's just kind of a launching point. We think of Bears Man Cave as a way to bring people in, maybe too, have never been even been to church. So you're welcome there. You're going to find a, a bunch of uh, knuckle draggers just like uh, just like me who would love to have you be a part of it. So go to deepadventure.com and join Bears Man Cave. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha. We're talking to uh, Rick Lentz. He's my co-adventure guide. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. And Rick, I want to ask you to, to just give me this. The, the, as you, you were going to church, you got married. Now you're starting to attend the Catholic Church, though you're not a Catholic. You're receiving the Eucharist, not knowing you're not supposed to. You enter about five years later into full communion in the church. But I want to ask you about what was your first confession like? The first time you received that sacrament. My, my first confession uh, was, was uh, looking back on it was just beautiful. I went in, the priest helped me, lead me, you know, kind of lead me through it. And I had a lot of sins to confess from my previous lifestyle. And um, just getting all of that out and having that absolution and just feeling all that sin just lifted off up of me. And then afterward, I just I cried for several minutes uh, at the f- feeling of freedom. So it, you really do. It's really so an encounter. It was a beautiful with, experience. It's an encounter with Jesus Christ. I, I so many people I know yes. they're, 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 they were in their the season of seeking to grow closer to the Lord. The miracle happened at the sacrament of confession. That's when everything, everything, all the doors opened and the, the sense of God's love just poured in. And their whole life was radically changed. But now we got just this last segment. I want you to talk to us about uh, brother to brother ministries, how that started, and what it's what it's all about. Well, in June of two thousand four, fifteen so fifteen years ago, my youngest son Kevin stopped to help a stranded motorist while walking home from work at ten thirty at night. Was struck from behind, pinned between the two cars. And uh, that was on June 9th. And on the morning of June 10th at 2.15 in the morning, he passed away. And I had been, was going through a one-on-one mentoring with an evangelical who was mentoring me. So I'm not in the, even the mentoring business at that point in time. And shortly after that event, a friend of mine, Dennis Spear, and I got back together and when I told him what had happened, even though he'd read it in the paper, he hadn't put it together. And he actually was in tears and he asked me, so how are you getting through with this? And I said, with my mentor, Steve Robinson. And he said, would you mentor me? And that was the start of my mentoring. And I was using Campus Crusade books mm-hmm. uh, f- for the first three years. But what was interesting was within 12 months, Within a year, God had brought 12 men into my life to mentor. All what, what do you mean by Catholic mentoring? Or lapsed what Catholics. do you mean by mentoring? What, what do you mean by mentoring someone? Well, it's sitting down with them and going through Scripture using some kind of program. Eventually, it became um, the uh, Catholic Topical Memory System written by Rich Cleveland here in Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and later on, it branched into other things. And it's just sitting with men once a week studying scripture, studying the catechism, talking about how to apply these Christian values to our lives, in our marriages, in our families, in so our this workplace. Is a, this is a small group setting, or is it one-on-one? It's primarily one-on-one for me. Interesting. It can be done in a small group setting, 
but I like one-on-one because you never miss a lesson. In a small group, if you're not there or the leader doesn't make it, you miss something. With this one-on-one, if we go on vacation or one of us is sick or some, whatever comes up, we just pick up where we left off the next week. So we if, some, if someone's you know, interested— not can't go back and do a podcast. Right. If someone's interested in, in, in what you're doing, what, what, what would be the first steps for them to, to learn how to do that? And uh, Just have a heart for men and find some kind of book to use just to get started. Uh, if they wanted to work with me, I work with men face to face here in Colorado Springs, and I work with men all around the country via Skype. Uh, similar to what you and I are doing today, um, and it works. I built some really great friendships with men from all races and uh, ethnic backgrounds, uh, doing brother to brother ministries. It's just been a great growth process for me. So when you say brother to mother min- brother ministries, you're mentoring someone. You're like Paul is to Silas, or Paul is to Timothy. Correct. These men. Yeah, but you don't have a particular pattern right. that you follow. You just open up scripture and let well, it speak to you, um, or how does that work? What we what we do is when we meet is we first open up with prayer, and we talk about what's been going on in our lives. And if the if the person I'm discipling or mentoring has a problem he brings up, then we may spend the whole hour or so doing just walking through that, almost like spiritual direction. Mm-hmm. Um, if not, then we get into whatever program, uh, and like I said, the scripture memory really helped, uh, in meditating on scripture and then talking about all that, uh, was a starter. And then we've gone through things, uh, Bible studies on specific books of the Bible, uh, like revelation, um, learning about uh, what's the real importance of the Eucharist and how it came down to us by Dr. Brant Petrie's book. Mm-hmm. I um, see. So that's kind of like what our man right cave now does. One, <clears throat> our man cave uh, does yes. that sort of thing. We don't, but we do it in a group setting. Like, well, the men, the men can use whatever book they want in their in their small small uh, men's group. Uh, there's no formal name for it. My book, Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue, is designed specifically to, to be uh, used for separate sessions, although people can just read it too, but it's designed for like those five minute, uh, or I shouldn't say five minute, uh, five, it's five pages for about a one hour dialogue. And it's meant, it's really important. I found in, in, in mentoring or in small men's group that you, the focus be on Jesus, that it'd be like on the catechism or on a book, a scripture or something like that. Because otherwise what tends to happen is people walk in the room and they feel like, if they don't have a problem, they got to make sure to come up with them before they leave so they can talk about problems. And that's not the focus. The focus is of those small groups. That can happen, but the focus of the small groups is usually to focus on Jesus and how to be better disciples and how to be, uh, you know, better, to be more uh, involved in, in sharing the gospel and to really minister to men. So, so can you help people uh, start what you're doing? Is there a way, is there some mechanism for them to be in touch with your ministry and help them to start? a mentoring type program, like brother to brother? Um, They can contact me and we can walk through the steps like you're talking about. Uh, I really do recommend uh, the Catholic Topical Memory System uh, by Rich Cleveland that can be purchased through Emmaus Journey. Uh, That book is a real help getting men to uh, understand Scripture and understand the principles of moral living and draw closer to Christ. In fact, the first section ends with a reaffirmation of your relationship with Jesus. And because that, as you said, that's the most important thing. Everything else is to help us get there to that relationship with Christ. And memorize, um, memorize. And it's helped me through so much. Memorizing scripture is a natural thing too. Some, when you're just reading it and meditating on it, you tend to memorize it because the Holy Spirit is like that. But think about this: when you see Saint Paul, you see, when you see a statue of Saint Paul, he's holding a sword. You know, the, the the Word of God is. He wrote these words: "The Word of God is living, and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide, to divide between spirit and soul, the joints and the marrow, 
and to seek out the secret thoughts and intentions of the heart. When you pick up the Bible, it's like a loaded gun, man. It's be careful with it because it's good. Don't think that you're going to pick up the Bible and dissect it like some modernistic theologian. It's going to dissect you. And that two-edged sword, the two, the two edges are truth and love. If you're around someone and all they want to do is talk about truth, uh, this, this is the way things need to be. This is, these are the facts. This is the doctrine. This is the moral teaching. But they don't have love to go with it. Then that's just uh, that's that doesn't work. And if all you have is warm fuzzy feelings and you don't have truth, that doesn't work. You need both, and that's why it's very important for men to begin to med- meditate and memorize scripture. And what is the name of the program you were recommending again that they could use to memorize? So, yeah, I, I and I I totally agree with that because it's really helped me. The other part for being when you're a mentor. Like you said, you don't have to have a theology degree, but what really helps me is I learn as much from them as they do from me how to better walk on my faith journey. Amen. That's been the biggest blessing. And if you know St. Paul, he walked. So, he walked 12, they say he walked basically yes. around the world as many steps as he took. But man, it's time to pick up your sword. You know, Paul wrote, wrote those words. And remember, he was also beheaded by a sword. But who won? Death, where is your sting? He wrote. Uh, uh, death has been taken. Death has been taken uh, into captivity uh, because we have we can wield the power of the sword. The way you get your sword is you you take that sword that Goliath was holding and you slay him with it. You look at the sin in your life and you pick up Scripture and you pick up the power of the sacraments and God's grace, and you slay that 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 dark side of you. You know it's there. And you, but use the word of God to do that. Even Jesus, when he fought Satan, he when Satan tempted him in the wilderness, he he used scripture. Satan used scripture to twist, but Jesus used scripture to defeat him. That's our sword, men. We're talking with Rick Lentz at Brother to Brother Ministries. Rick, thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Bear. It was a great pleasure. And would, God bless. Yeah, go to go to our website deepadventure dot com and find out more about how you can be part of our ministry. I'll tell you, when our web designer works on our website, he says, there's too much, there's just way too much, there's too much here. How are we going to put it all on the website? It's kind of a problem. But if you go to the website, you can use your iPad or your iPhone or your, your desktop, you're going to discover so many great things at uh, deepadventure.com. And check out Rick Lentz and his ministry, brother to brother ministriescom Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.